Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in which we are discussing thrombosis and antithrombotic drugs. Okay, so to understand how the antithrombotic drugs work, uh, we need to understand thrombosis. And in order to understand thrombosis, we need to understand the physiological process, which is hemostasis. So we're in the process of revising the hemostatic pathway. Okay, right, so we've just revised the structures, uh, well, the layers of the blood vessel. Okay, and now what we're going to do is describe platelet adhesion. So let's start with a little description of what a platelet actually is. So one of the constituents of the blood is a subcellular structure. Well, I don't know really what to call it. It's not a cell, but its name implies that it's a cell. Okay, so it's like a little cell basically, but it has no nucleus. So here is a platelet, and it's old name, at which you'll still hear occasionally, is to call it a thrombocyte. So you have these little structures known as platelets circulating in the blood, and they have a membrane, and they have some cytoplasm as well. However, they are not a very big cell. You know, if you have a blood cell, a red blood cell, and an erythrocyte sitting next to it, it's, this is the red blood cell here, the RBC. Okay, it dwarfs the platelet, and it's because the platelet is really a fragment of a cell. So if we describe how platelets are made, basically in the bone marrow there is a huge great blob of a cell, a massive great cell, known as a megakaryocyte. So this is a megakaryocyte. And basically these megakaryocytes, they um, will pinch off little portions of their membrane here, Okay, so this is our megakaryocyte within the bone marrow, and I'll give it a nucleus up here. Okay, um, and they'll pinch off portions of their cytoplasm, and this little pinched off portion of their cytoplasm, surrounded by a membrane, this is what will become a platelet. So megakaryocytes pinch off little portions of their membrane, which are filled with cytoplasm, like so to create these little cell fragments, basically, which are platelets, okay, and they release these into the bloodstream. So, the platelets are very, very important in the uh, hemostatic pathway. So, when you've got a hole in the side of your blood vessel here, the first thing that's going to start happening is you're going to get platelet adhesion. So let's now discuss what happens. Okay, and for this we need to discuss the structure of the endothelium in a little bit more detail. So, if we have a normal endothelium then, here is our endothelial cell here, and here is another endothelial cell, and now I'm drawing this again, uh, where we're looking along the axis of the blood flow, so I'm drawing a picture like this rather than like this again, okay? So here we have one endothelial cell neighbouring onto the next endothelial cell, and they are sitting upon this basement membrane, which I'll draw in turquoise here. So here is the basement membrane. Okay, and then both of these endothelial cells will have nuclei, one here and one here. Basically, endothelial cells, as with all epithelial cells, are a polar cell. Now what does that mean? It means that they are split into two portions. They have an apical face, which faces the lumen of the blood vessel, and they have a basolateral face. And basically, separating these two portions, what you have is something known as a tight junction, which goes between the endothelial cells. And I can't really do these tight junctions justice with the picture that I've drawn at the moment. To show you really what a tight junction is, we need to draw a picture as though we are standing within the lumen of the blood vessel. So here we are, standing in the lumen of the blood vessel, and looking up at this as our ceiling. Okay, so now let's have a look at that picture. So basically what you have is the endothelial cells here. Okay. And they are often compared to massive great fried egg cells. Okay, so they have a nucleus at the centre and then that's like the yolk of the egg. And then they have uh, the white of the egg, sort of is the, the cytoplasm spanning out around them. Okay. So here we have these endothelial cells. Now, basically, 
the, we're looking at the apical surfaces of the endothelial cells because that's what we'll see. We're, we're looking from the lumen of the blood vessel, so we'll see the apical faces. Now, you might think, well, surely we could walk down here. We could go right up to this endothelial cell. We could walk down its edge and then go back underneath here and get to the basolateral side. If we were small enough, surely we could do that. Well, the answer is no, because basically, intertwining amongst all of these endothelial cells, like so, like this sort of, um, well, I don't know, it's, it's, well, it's often compared to, like, the plastic packaging around a six-pack of beer, basically. So, the endothelial cells are like a beer can, and if you buy a six-pack of beer, i.e. not one that's in a cardboard box, but one that's just got the cans loose, but they're all held together by a piece of plastic, that intertwines around all of the beer cans and holds them all together. It's a very tight piece of plastic. The tight junction is often compared to that piece of plastic, basically. It's tightly wrapping around all of the endothelial cells, like so, into all of the crevices between them, basically. And if you wanted to try and walk from the apical side to the basolateral side of this endothelial cell, you wouldn't be able to get past this tight junction, basically. You can't get through there. So you cannot get to the basolateral portion of the um, endothelial cell from the lumen, because this is everywhere. Uh, so you cannot get past it. All you can see is the apical membrane of these endothelial cells. Now, this allows a polarity of the endothelial cells because the endothelial cells can put certain proteins in the apical membrane and other proteins in the basolateral membrane, and they don't need to worry about the proteins in the basolateral membrane diffusing into the apical membrane because the proteins, just like our little man here, cannot get past the tight junction. So if you imagine having a protein sitting, let's say, in the membrane of the in the basolateral membrane of the cell, then it can diffuse throughout the cell membrane, but it can't. Well, it can diffuse throughout the basolateral membrane, but it cannot get into the apical membrane because if it comes around here, tries to get past the tight junction, its extracellular portion here will get caught against the tight junction. It just won't be able to get past there, so it can't get into the apical membrane. So this is very important. Basically, we have a certain protein in the basolateral membrane of our endothelial cells, okay? And this protein is going to be very important in platelet adhesion, okay? So this protein is known as von Willebrand factor, okay? Often abbreviated to VWF for short, so von Willebrand factor. And this usually is abbreviated with lowercase v, capital W, and then capital F, like that, von Willebrand factor. Right, so we have this protein, von Willebrand factor, in the basolateral membrane of all of our endothelial cells. Okay, now it is not usually visible to the contents of the cell, because it is in the basolateral membrane, and the contents of the blood cannot see um, the, sorry, did I say contents of the cell before? It's not usually visible to the contents of the blood because um, the contents of the blood cannot get past these tight junctions, so it can only see what's in the apical membrane, not the basolateral membrane. So the contents of the blood does not see von Willebrand factor. Specifically, the platelets which are in the blood do not see von Willebrand factor. However, if we go back to our crisis, we've got this hole in the side of our bl blood vessel. So what's that going to do? Well, this picture is drawn uh, from the same viewpoint as this picture. So if we cut a great big hole across here, what's going to happen? Okay, so for instance, if we, let's say, cut right across here, okay, or you could cut wherever you like. The point is, let's show this. So here are our endothelial cells, and let's say we cut across one of the endothelial cells, okay? So what will happen is the endothelial cell will be cut in half, okay, like so, and here's its neighbouring endothelial cell, okay? And then the basement membrane's also been cut in half, so then the basement membrane's underneath here. Now when you cut a cell actually in half, 
what will happen very quickly is that the membrane will fuse back up. So initially what would have happened is you'd actually have the cytoplasm oozing out, but very quickly what will happen is the membrane will start to fuse up. Okay, just because it's thermodynamically favourable. I mean, it's going to lose a lot of its cytoplasm before it does that, but the, um, very quickly the phospholipid bilayer here will find the phospholipid bilayer here and they'll fuse back up. Okay, so we've cut through here, and of course we'll have other things as well here. So underneath the basement membrane, you've also cut through the subendothelial connective tissue here, and also the internal elastic lamina below, and also all of the smooth muscle cells. So here's our hole in the side of our blood vessel now. Right, now what does this mean? You have disturbed the endothelium somewhat. You have disturbed the integrity of the endothelium. You've disturbed the polarity. Okay, now, look. Is there anything stopping proteins in this basolateral membrane from going into the apical membrane anymore? Absolutely not because there's nothing here to block them. So basically, this von Willebrand factor that for so long has been stored in the basolateral membrane, being sequestered away so that platelets could not see it, is now on, um, well, it's now going to be exposed to platelets. It may even go into the apical membrane here. So, when you've got this hole in the side of the blood vessel, it's going to disturb the endothelial cells, and von Willebrand factor will now end up exposed to the contents of the blood. In addition, the contents of the blood is actually going to start moving through here. Aren't, well, that's what's causing the hemorrhage. That's what's causing the whole problem. Okay, so basically platelets are going to meet this von Willebrand factor that we've got now exposed on our damaged endothelial cells. So this is von Willebrand factor. Okay, right. So, the platelets, what receptor do they have which binds to von Willebrand factor? So the platelets, if we've got a little platelet here, it has a protein on its surface membrane, so here is this protein, which is known as glycoprotein 1B95, okay? So this is glycoprotein 1B, uh, I'll put this down here, 1B, and then it's because it's so important, its name is done in Roman numerals. And vascular physiologists absolutely love Roman numerals, so we'll see a lot of Roman numerals in this video. Uh, so glycoprotein 1B, 9, is, there's the Roman numeral for 9, 1X, and then 5 is just V in Roman numerals. So glycoprotein 1B, 9, 5, which is often abbreviated to GP, 1B, and often people will just refer to it as GP1B, uh, but strictly speaking you should say GP1B95. Okay, right, so you have GP1B95 on the surface of your platelets, so let me highlight this in, in purple here, and this basically is a receptor for von Willebrand factor. So what's going to happen is that our platelet with its glycoprotein 1B95 is going to bind to the exposed von Willebrand factor on the surface of our damaged endothelial cell here. So if we've got our damaged endothelial cell here, okay, here is the von Willebrand factor, here is the glycoprotein 1B95, and I won't attempt to colour in this picture because um, it's so diddy and colouring it in will just smudge it. Okay, so the von Willebrand factor on the damaged endothelial cell here, one with a brand factor, is going to bind to the glycoprotein 1B95 on the uh, platelet here, 9, 5. Okay, and this process is called platelet adhesion. So if you think about what's going to happen, these damaged or disturbed endothelial cells are going to be now covered in von Willebrand factor. Okay, so the endothelial cells that have actually been cut by the hole uh, that you've made in the side of the arteriole, okay, so all of the endothelial cells which line this hole in the wall of the blood vessel, they are going to have von Willebrand factor on their surface, and they therefore will get platelets adhering to them, so all around this, the entrance to the hole of the blood, in the wall of the blood vessel, you're going to get platelets adhering to these damaged endothelial cells, so you're not just going to get one adhering, you'll get 
loads of the things adhering. Okay, so that is what's known as platelet adhesion. Okay, so we'll discuss the next step of the hemostasis pathway, which is um, platelet activation in the next video.